Hi yogis, today we're gonna do a fun Hatha Vinyasa flow, focusing on the whole trifecta of flexibility, strength, and balance all together. Hope you enjoy it, let's get started. Let's start in a seat. Getting a little bit grounded before our practice. Connecting to your breath, to your posture. Finding perfect ease within your seated meditation. So important to be able to sit without pain. That's the goal when you sit. So really, when we find length, it should be a comfortable length. It shouldn't be too active, pushing the belly forward, looking to find more length. The belly should be relaxed in the center. The lower back should be relaxed. Make sure you're not arching a bit in the lower back. Really grounded in your seat bones. Shoulders rolled back, heart open forward. And just start to connect to the movement of your breath. Trying to quiet the mind, finding stillness in your thoughts just by focusing on your breath. Allowing us to instantly feel more present, more aware of our body and our mind and our breath, all connected together. Let's bring our hands to our belly and start to activate more focused breath here. Working on just belly breathing. Trying as little as possible to feel the breath in your upper chest, shoulders, neck region. Just focusing it on the belly, feeling the belly expand within your hands and contract back to center. Breathing deeply through the nose. Feeling this calm movement of the belly, inflating and deflating. Really activating our diaphragm, the muscle located at the bottom of your rib cage, which really initiates every breath you take. You really wanna focus on this region, focus on that muscle. Slowly bring your hands to your knees. Come into a little bit more of an active breath movement. Coming into seated cat cow. We're gonna inhale and push the chest forward. Open up the whole throat region. And exhale, pushing off of your knees, bringing chin to chest, rounding the spine back. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Go as deep as you can. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Let's add a little bit of a circular movement here. Still maintaining that open and close, but just circling around. Still connecting your breath to your movement. So inhaling as you open the chest forward, exhaling as you round the spine back. Awakening that energy, that stale energy at the bottom of your spine. Awakening the serpent that sleeps there. Kundalini energy. And slowly change direction.
Come back to center. Close the eyes for a moment, just channeling that awakened energy within. Really centralized here in the belly region. The solar plexus chakra, feeling that fire, that energy from within. And slowly open the eyes. Let's come to a seat on our knees and toes like we love, a good toe stretch. Really weighting down onto the heels. Try not to lean forward, arch the back and remove weight off of your heels. Almost like you're tucking the tailbone down, really weighting down with your upper body over your heels. You can feel free to close your eyes. And I really recommend in any posture to close your eyes and practice each pose with the eyes closed, just really channeling inward and less outward. If it's uncomfortable, you can always focus on a point on the floor in front of you as well. As long as you're focused in your posture and your breath. Finding the comfortable within the uncomfortable is a part of yoga, but also a beautiful lesson for life, for your everyday activities. Always finding the ease and the love and the comfort within everything that happens to you, around you, and for you. Let's inhale the hands up. Exhale, grab one elbow, doesn't matter which one, we'll do the other one in a second. Coming into a little bit of a shoulder opening here, focusing a little bit less on the toes and a little bit more on the shoulders. Let's take three deep breaths. And inhale the heads up, exhale, change side. Inhale the hands up, exhale, release your posture off of your toes, tapping the feet, allowing the circulation to flow back into all your toes. And we'll go into the reverse, sitting on your heels, sitting on the front of our ankles now. Knees together, heels together. If this is already too much, you can always play with the weight. If it's okay, we're leaning back, but not necessarily leaning on your hands. You don't want to weight onto your hands. You just want to use it to be able to help you to lift the knees. I would stay high on your fingertips, not to be too dependent on your arms. And if this is comfortable, you can lift the hands to heart center and balance. Take five deep breaths here. Slowly release. Let's meet each other in a tabletop. Hands beneath the shoulders, knees beneath the hips. Make sure they're also wide enough and not too narrow or too close to each other. Spreading out the fingers, getting a beautiful grip on your mat. Let's start to circle on our hands, warming up our wrists. Try to maintain a neutral spine here as you circle forward and back. Still maintaining an active core here, making sure you're not just sinking through with the belly. And change direction. Meeting back at center, let's focus here just on the shoulders and go into some shoulder shrugs. What does a shoulder shrug mean? The whole body stays the same, arms, legs, feet, hips, back. You're just pushing off of your hands like you're pushing a wall in front of you. And then sinking the upper chest region in between your arms. Really isolating here in the shoulders. It can be 
a weird feeling if you haven't done this before. And even here, press into the fingertips, ground into the palms of your hands and connect the movement to your breath. So inhaling as you push off the ground, exhaling as you sink in between your shoulder blades. Move at your own pace. Let's do five rounds. After you complete five, move your, the weight of your hips to your heels, finding a wide angle child's pose. Resting your third eye, forehead region on the ground. Arms in front of you, long, getting deep into the shoulders here as well. Let's take a couple more deep breaths here. Really sinking even more with your chest to the ground, maybe walking the fingers a little bit further forward. And slowly rise back up to your tabletop pose. Hands beneath the shoulders, knees beneath the hips. Tuck the toes underneath and find your downward facing dog. Take a moment to maybe walk out the legs, warming up your hamstrings. Maybe moving the weight forward and back from your hands to your feet. And find your static down dog now. Making sure you're moving the weight from your hands to your feet. And if your spine feels a bit curved, bend in the knees slightly and push the weight off your hands back to your feet a little bit more, finding that beautiful long spine, which is more important than finding your straight legs or heels touching the ground. Those will come eventually with practice and time and patience. From here, we're going to inhale the right leg up to the sky and exhale, bring the foot all the way in between your hands. You can help if you need to with your hands. Make sure the foot is really faced all the way forward so that your knee is above your ankle. We're going to drop the left knee and come into a low lunge. Inhale the hands up high. Anjaniyasana. Beautiful. Make sure you tuck the tailbone down, not arching too much in the lower back, protecting the lower back, and feeling it primarily in your left thigh hip flexor region. Take one more deep breath here. And slowly lower the hands back down to the ground. Moving the weight back to your left foot and straightening that right leg, finding half splits. Try to maintain a straight spine here for as long as you can, really connecting belly to thigh. And using your breath as a tool, every exhale going deeper into your posture. Breathing deeply. If you're feeling super warm and flexy today, you can try going into full splits here. Really just sliding that front foot forward, making sure that left knee stays grounded and doesn't turn outwards. You can stay flexed on that back foot to really make sure of that if you want. It won't be as pretty, but it will be correct in alignment. If it's difficult or you don't have your full splits yet, you can always use props on the side and just balance wherever you are or wear socks on your wood floor or on your floor in your house and really try to slide through or lay up against the wall, opening the legs wide and just sitting there whenever you have time. Let's slowly slide back through, finding your half splits. 
and lean forward to low lunge. It's gonna open, we're gonna open the right leg a little bit more towards the right. Both hands to the left and lower down to lizard pose. You can stay high up on your hands or you can lower down onto your forearms and elbows. Be here for a couple deep breaths, allowing the hips to sink a little bit deeper with every exhale. Slowly come back up onto your hands. Bring that right foot in between your hands, coming up onto your back toes, and lifting back up to your one-legged dog. Inhale, exhale, regular down dog. Take a moment here just to feel the difference in your hip joints and your legs before we change sides. Let's inhale the left leg up to the sky. And exhale, bring it all the way through in between your hands. Helping if you need to. Dropping the right knee down to the ground. Inhale up to low lunge. Again, tucking the tailbone down, making sure you're protecting the lower back. Really lengthening the arms towards the sky. You can look up towards your hands or you can look straight ahead of you depending on how your neck is feeling today. And if you're knee sensitive, you can always place an extra pillow, double fold your mat. Let's take one more deep breath here. And exhale, lower the hands down to the ground. Move the weight back towards your right leg and flex and straighten the left leg now, finding your half splits. Take a moment, try to maintain that long straight spine, open heart, connecting belly to thigh first. And using your breath to go a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. Again here, you can try to go into full splits if you feel comfortable doing that or stay in your half splits. If you want to maintain that right knee on the ground, keeping alignment, you can flex in the foot if that helps. Just a little tip. Breathing deeply. At whatever level you are, always connecting to your breath. One more deep breath. And slowly moving back to your half splits. Take one more deep breath here. And move the weight forward to your low lunge. Moving the left foot out more to the left. Right, the hands come towards the right side. And lowering down to your elbows and forearms for lizard pose. You can stay up high on your hands as well. If going down on your forearms is a little too deep, just see what feels right for you. Feel playful, never feel pain. Breathing deeply through the nose, finding that peace, that stillness. One more deep breath. And slowly come back up onto your hands. Moving that left foot back to center in between your hands. And inhale as you lift up, sliding that left leg back, finding your one-legged down dog. Exhale to down dog. Take a moment, walking out your legs again, feeling the Openness in your left hip joint now, your left hamstrings. You're gonna inhale the right leg up to sky. Exhale, place it in between your hands, but stay high on your back leg. We're not lowering down this time. Inhale up to high lunge. 
Nice. Staying high on your toes, heel lifted up towards the sky, right knee above right ankle, tailbone tilted low, focusing on the left hip flexor now. Hands reaching up towards the sky. If it feels comfortable for you, you can always extend a little bit more into the back bend region while still maintaining that tuck in the tailbone. Even though we're going into a back bend, we want to work here more from our upper back and less from our lower back. Always feeling length, no compression. And again, feel free to look up towards your hands or forward with a neutral neck. Let's slowly bring our hands towards the back, interlace our fingers. Inhale as you reach the heart forward. Exhale, bringing chest to thigh. Finding yourself in humble warrior. Really letting the arms come overhead, opening the shoulders. Feeling stable in your feet as well. Pressing down into your toes. Make sure that knee is still above the ankle, still above the heel. Taking a couple more deep breaths, you can do it. Feel the thigh burn. We're gonna drop the hands to the ground, next to our feet. And slowly move our weight to our left hand and left foot to enter side plank. Finding your side plank, make sure your hips aren't sinking low towards the ground hands in line with each other, feet either stacked or both placed on the ground. Let's take three deep breaths here. For an extra challenge, you can start to lift that top leg and connect top hand to knee. Right hand with right knee. And slowly place that right foot behind you, finding yourself in wild thing pose. Really lifting up with your hips up towards the sky, hand above your head, or falling down behind you. Whatever feels nice for you in your wild thing pose. Take three deep breaths. And slowly come back to your plank. Coming back to center, and walk the feet forward towards your hands, grabbing opposite elbows, finding a dangling forward fold, allowing the hands to rest for a moment before we change sides. <sighs> Place the hands back down on the ground. Let's walk back to plank. You can choose chaturanga or chin chest knees, lowering down to the ground. Exhale, inhale, up dog. Looking up towards the sky, heart radiating forward. Exhale, down dog. And let's change sides. Inhale, left leg up to sky. Exhale, left leg in between your hips. Staying high on that back leg. Inhale as you lift up to high lunge. Again, making sure knees above heel. Back leg is active and strong. Heel is lifting up towards the sky. Tailbone tucked below. Breathing deeply. If you feel comfortable, you can work on extending with the heart, finding back bend here. Let's take one more deep breath. And slowly exhale, hands behind your back, interlace your fingers. Inhale, open heart, 
Reach the arms lower down, almost touching your back thigh. And exhale, chest to thigh, finding humble warrior. Grounding in your feet, feeling stable and balanced. Letting the hands drop overhead, going deep into the shoulder region. Couple more deep breaths. And slowly drop the hands down to the ground on both sides of your feet. Moving the weight towards your right hand and right foot. Moving back to side plank. Take three deep breaths in your side plank, making sure the hips aren't falling towards the ground. For added challenge, slowly lifting that left leg, bending in the knee, connecting left hand to left knee. And drop that left leg behind you, finding wild thing, opening your heart and your hips up towards the sky. Three deep breaths. And moving back to center to plank pose. Let's go down to the floor. Chaturanga, exhale. You can also just lower down to your belly if you want. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Let's walk our feet to our hands again. And find dangling forward fold. Rocking side to side. You can keep the knees bent here if that makes you feel more stable or more bouncy. And then slowly roll up to standing pose, vertebrae by vertebrae. And once you get up, close your eyes for a moment. Allowing the circulation to flow from your head to your legs again. Connecting to your heartbeat. Knowing that if you breathe more deeply, your heartbeat will also slow down. And slowly open the eyes. Let's come into some balanced postures. We're gonna go into Eagle Pose. So we wanna bring the weight onto our right foot. Inhale, lift left knee to chest. Exhale as you sit down in your standing leg, bending and interlacing the legs together. We're gonna keep hands to heart center here, doing a variation. Really working on finding that bind. If you are maintaining the bind, you can bring the left leg just over the right leg onto the ground or you can practice by a wall to make you feel more stable and find that bind. Take three deep breaths here, really sitting into your posture, almost like in a chair pose, a binded chair pose. And inhale, come up, unbind the leg, keeping hands to heart center, and then reaching Left leg back, finding a warrior three variation. Hands to heart center still, keeping hands here. Make sure the hips are aligned and that left hip isn't opening up towards the left. Keeping hips aligned and facing the ground, facing the floor beneath you. Back leg is active, either in flex or point, whatever is more comfortable for you. Take one more deep breath. And exhale, lower hands to ground. And lift that left leg up towards the sky, finding standing splits. Take three deep breaths, moving the weight into your hands, lifting that left leg a little bit higher. 
One more breath. And lower down the left leg. Taking a moment with any movement that comes good to you. Maybe walking out the legs. Maybe shaking out that right leg like a dog. A third dog. <laughs> Whatever feels good to you before we go to that other side. Rolling up to standing, vertebrae by vertebrae. Taking a moment, eyes closed, allowing the circulation to flow back down to your feet. And slowly open the eyes, preparing yourself for the other side. To move the weight up to our left foot now. Inhale, hands to heart center, lift the right leg up. Exhale, sit into your eagle pose, bending in your standing leg and binding both legs together. Again, keeping hands to heart center. Take three deep breaths here. Really trying to sit a little bit deeper into your pose. Focus on that one point, your drishti, that's helping you feel your balance, connect to your balance. And inhale, unbind, lift up. Exhale, shoot that right leg all the way back, coming into warrior three variation, hands to heart center. Again, you can flex or point, making sure the hips are aligned and facing the ground. That's okay if your leg needs to lower down to maintain that hip alignment. It's more important than getting that high leg. One more deep breath. And drop the hands to the ground and lift that right leg towards the sky, finding your standing splits. Three deep breaths. Lower right leg down to the ground. And again, find some leg movement here. Whatever feels good to you to release that balance practice. <sighs> here in our, in our forward fold position, we're gonna place the hands down in front of us. Bending the knees and finding your crow pose. So in our crow pose, if you're a beginner, you'll come to the ground, hands, fingers open, ready to grip the floor, feeling strong in your arms. The knees will be on the outside of your tricep, on the outside of your upper arm. And you're gonna lean forward onto your hands, coming up high onto your tippy toes and really press the arms against your knees together. The knees are squeezing inwards and the arms are pushing outwards. Look a little bit in front of you and start to lift maybe one foot, maybe the other foot. Breathing deeply, feeling playful. If you need to place any pillows around you, feel free to do so. Whatever makes you feel safe but still strong and powerful. If you're holding it, you can maintain for five breaths. Or if you're playing, just moving forward and back, maybe just coming up onto your tippy toes and back into your yogi squat, just feeling playful. Then slowly release and come to a seat on your tush. Straightening the legs in front of you. Let's take a second to find that 90 degree angle, this active seated position here. Hands can be placed by your hips. Close your eyes. Flexing hard in your legs, toes in line with your knees, going towards your body using your hands to help you find length in your spine and open your heart even more.
Inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, fold forward to forward fold position. It doesn't matter where your hands go. Just get to that point and use your breath as a tool. I will always keep saying this. It's so important to learn how to use your breath and postures. Every inhale, finding length in your spine, opening the heart a little bit more. Every exhale, going deeper into the posture. We're always looking for length and release. Length and release. Make sure you stay flexed in the feet, keeping the feet active, the legs active. Inhale, the hands come all the way up. Exhale, let's bring the left leg towards us. By, uh, connecting here in the sole of your feet with your inner right thigh. Flexing in that right leg now, we'll come into head to knee posture. Inhale the hands up. Exhale again, lower down, head to knee. Keeping that right leg flexed. Inhale the hands come all the way up. Exhale, let's turn towards our left knee and also open up the hip towards the left knee. We'll keep the right leg in the same spot. So the right leg will stay where it is and just that left knee will open up a little bit more. Our hips will turn towards the left knee and our upper body as well. Inhale, hands come up to shoulder height. Exhale, let's lower down, leading with our right hand on the inside of our right leg. Trying to grab that inner sole of your foot before you bend over. Really trying to grab here because this will help you get even deeper. So we hold here and then the left hand flies overhead, maybe also grabbing the right foot or not. Whatever you are doing with your arms or whatever feels good for you, just make sure that your heart is facing up towards the sky is radiating forward and you're not just folding with the upper body towards the right leg. Again, what feels comfortable for your neck? You can stay looking forward or look up towards the sky. Breathing deeply here, feeling this expansion and deep stretch on the left side of your upper body, belly region. Inhale, reach back up, hands towards the sky. Exhale, we're gonna turn towards the back of our mats now, placing both hands down, and then turning with our hips and our left knee to find a pigeon pose. So if you're not familiar, you're gonna turn all the way around and your left knee will be by your left hand now and your left foot will be by your right hand. Make sure you're not sitting on that foot or any part of the left leg. If you're not very open in the hips and the hips are a little bit raised, that's okay. You can also place any prop, a pillow, or a towel block beneath your left hip to find that hip alignment. Take a second to look behind you and make sure your right leg is straight and not going in any sort of weird direction. We're gonna take a second here, bringing the hands by our hips Really opening up the chest forward like a pigeon does, feeling like a beautiful, big chested pigeon. Let's take three deep breaths here. And then slowly lower down to sleeping pigeon, resting your forehead on your arms, making sure the weight is more in your right leg and less in your left leg that your hips are aligned.
Take a couple more deep breaths here, really going deep into that left hip and into that right hip flexor. Stretching both legs in different ways. It's a great combo leg posture. And slowly start to come back up onto your hands. And walk the hands around the right side just the same way we came into our postures, turning that left leg back in and all the way forward to that first pose, straightening the left leg and shake out the legs for a moment before we go to the next side. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, right leg comes to left inner thigh. Inhale again, hands come up, finding length in that spine, beautiful lengthy spine. Exhale, head to knee, flexing in that left foot. Keeping the leg active here. One more deep breath. And inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, we're turning towards our right knee now, keeping that left foot in that same spot, just turning with the hip and the upper body towards the right leg. I'll turn around so you can see me. Inhale, the hands come up to shoulder height. Exhale, leading with that left hand towards the left inner sole of your foot and then from there allowing the right hand to lift up overhead maybe also grabbing that left foot using that hold you have on your foot to help you open up your chest to the sky and your heart radiating forward again breathing deeply connecting to that deep stretch in the right side of your body now One more deep breath. And inhale, come all the way up, hands towards the sky. Exhale, bringing the hands towards the back of your mat. And swinging around your right knee all the way towards your right hand. Right foot on the left side. Finding your pigeon pose. Take a look behind you, making sure your left leg is nice and straight. And slowly walking the hands by your hips to help you find that open chested, powerful pigeon stance. Take three deep breaths here. And slowly lower down, forehead to hand, finding your sleeping pigeon. Making sure you're more weighted in the left leg now and less in the right. Breathe deeply, sending every breath you take your hip region, releasing completely into your posture. Just take one more deep breath here. And slowly come back up onto your hands. And walk your hands down the left side, the same way we came into each posture, finding both legs forward at the end. Let's cross our legs underneath. 
Then come forward into a tabletop position. We're gonna go into a little bit of a headstand practice. If you're not familiar, you can do it by a wall or with a friend if you have a roommate or something to feel extra comfortable or place pillows around you. If you're okay with practicing in the middle of the room, let's do it together. So today I'd like to work on the tripod variation where we're not holding our heads. Our hands are before in front of us, making a 90 degree angle with the arms and the head is a little bit forward. So here it's important that you don't just place your hands and your head in between your hands. You can't balance here. You really want to place your hands onto the ground. Make sure the fingers are wide and stable, gripping the floor. And then come forward and place the crown of your head in front of you. You can look at your arms here and see that they're making a nice 90 degree angle and they're not too narrow or bending too much. You can really look at your arms here. And we're gonna get comfortable. So start to lift the hips up, walking the feet towards your head. If this is uncomfortable, you can just practice that movement of just walking the feet, feeling more comfortable with weight on your head. If you're okay, let's start to bring our knees onto our triceps, almost like we did in crow pose today. You can also try with one foot and then the other, taking a second to feel comfortable on your head, knees are on your arms, on your upper arms. And if you're okay here, we're gonna to start to bend the legs towards our butt and use our core to lift up. Keeping the legs bent, finding stability in the center here, moving weight from our head to our hands and back and forth, finding our balance. Make sure the elbows stay centered and don't splay out towards the sides. If you're comfortable here, we're gonna lift up into straight legs. Whatever variation you chose on the way, let's take five deep breaths together. And slowly bend the knees back down and try to get out of the posture the same way we came in. Knees come back to triceps, to your upper arms, like in crow pose. And then move the weight up to your feet. Finding the yogi squat. You can take a couple more tries if you didn't get it and you wanna keep practicing. Or you can meet me in a child's pose, just to take a second to rest and allow the circulation to find its stillness a little bit less in our head. Take one more deep breath. Let's walk our hands up. Cross our feet from underneath and come onto our backs. You're gonna bring knees to chest and give yourself a big juicy hug, holding opposite elbows around your knees, bringing your head to your knees as well, being in complete flexion, folding the whole body together. Take three deep breaths here in wind release pose. And slowly drop the head back down to the ground. Open the hands out by your shoulders. Let's circle the knees together, giving yourself a little back massage. And change direction. back to center and let's bring the knees all the way towards the right side staying together finding a twist here look towards the left side you can use your right hand on your legs to go deeper into the twist or you can keep your hands 
shoulder length and just relax. You don't have to work into this posture, only if you choose to. Inhale, legs back to center. Exhale, change sides. Knees go up, change sides. Knees go all the way to the left side and look towards the right. Inhale, knees back to center. Exhale, and find your Shavasana. Opening the legs as wide as your mat, or maybe a little bit wider. Make sure the head is centered, the spine is centered, that you're not slanted or curved in any way. Your shoulders are away from the ears and relaxed on the ground. Chin is a little bit more tucked towards the chest, feeling length in your neck. And just start to breathe deeply here. Palms are facing up or they can be placed on your belly, whatever feels more comfortable for you right now. Make sure you're completely relaxed, surrendering to the ground beneath you. Only feeling the movement of your belly rising and falling with every deep breath you take. Pay attention also to all the little muscles in your body, like the ones in your face. Make sure those are also relaxed, the space in between your eyebrows, your tongue, making sure your teeth aren't clenched, all those little, those little things to take notice of. Clearing out the mind completely, just like we did in our seated meditation at the beginning of the practice. Always returning to your breath, thinking about your breath, and staying present in your mind and body. Feeling as though you're melting into the ground beneath you. Becoming one with the ground beneath you. Let's take a couple more deep breaths here. Really filling up the body and emptying it out completely like a balloon. Keeping the eyes closed, let's meet each other in a comfortable seat. You can use your hands and your feet to help you rise up and adjust yourself as needed. It doesn't matter in which direction you're sitting or how you're sitting. So lifting up into a seat, feeling tall in your spine, allowing the circulation to flow back down from your head to your lower body. Returning to your normal breath. And bring your hands to heart center. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a comment down below, like the video, subscribe to my channel so you can see all my new classes and videos coming out in the future. Hope you have a beautiful day or evening wherever you are in the world. Bye.